Good evening and thank you for joining us, Aaron. Uh, that's one of those sports that's uh, pretty dependent on the gear. You've got to have good boats or it's yep. hard to row yep. well. Oh, exactly. And the Lakeland Rustlers, they had last year some hail damage, but then had some help and got some new equipment. So I'll have some more uh, details on that in sports. Fantastic. We'll look forward to that. Gerard, what are we looking forward to for the weekend? Well, the weekend is looking pretty good, all right? We've got some cloud cover coming in right now. It's been building since about 2 o'clock. Let's see what we're dealing with right about now. The sun has actually been trying to force on back out. We got to 28 at about 2 o'clock, and then we dropped off a couple, sitting at 26, 31%, and it's that humidity. It's been inching up steadily since the last couple of hours and the winds basically out of the south today at the moment coming at 21 kilometers an hour uv reading of three so as we compare across the region a bit more cloud cover to the north of us in the cold lake area for that 22 and in the battlefords <laughs> smiling and enjoying all of the blue skies and the sunshine for that 29 more to come in our second segment a fire on the north side of lloydminster this morning damaged a home and killed a family pet Fire crews doused flames at the house on 54th Street across from the Husky Ballpark. The blaze was spotted by a neighbor who called the fire department. Nobody was home at the time and no, no people were injured. However, the family's dog was killed in the fire, which started in the back room of the house. Its cause is thought to be electrical in nature. Damages to the home are estimated at seventy dollars to $80,000. The results of a new local hospital survey are out, and users say the level of health care isn't what they'd hoped for. The province of Saskatchewan has set a standard level of satisfaction that is supposed to be met by every region every year. But in 2010, the Prairie North Health region didn't quite make the minimum requirements. Whitney Stinson breaks down the numbers and finds out what officials are going to do about it. You don't have to dig deep for feedback on the Lloydminster Hospital. It could certainly use some more doctors. I mean, you go to an emergency, you could be there for hours. They need more doctors in this town because the hospitals are horrible to get into. It is very disappointing. But the recent Best Possible Hospital survey results made the sentiment official. Only 22.4% of PNHR patients gave their hospital a perfect score. That number is down from the previous year and below the provincial average of 26.5%. Reducing the surgical wait time. Their CEO says these numbers are cause for serious concern. It means that 75% essentially you know, think we're not doing that well. The survey was given to patients at all five hospitals in the region, but a breakdown of satisfaction rates per hospital will not be released. Fans suspects, though, Lloyd Minster is the one in the most need. Access to basic uh, health care services, family physician services, uh, is a big concern. When you have to wait four hours, six hours, eight hours in the ER of the hospital, it is a huge concern. Now, for the past six months, PNHR has been working to remedy that problem by focusing on the recruitment and retention initiative. So far, they have three specialists on their way here and three new family physicians setting up shop for January at the very latest. In the meantime, uh, we continue to recruit uh, more family physicians and hopefully uh, we will have more success in that area. Fan says another key factor for patient satisfaction will come from a change of attitude in the staff. I think we need to remind ourselves uh, that we're in the business of looking after people and we're in the public service arena, so uh, we always need to, to do better. Whitney Stinson, Newcap News. When the books closed on the deal to move the weapons range tax revenue to Cold Lake, the city received the help it desperately needed. But as Clayton Brown explains, the realignment affected multiple municipalities surrounding the range. The county of Lac La Biche will no longer be receiving the $17 million in tax revenue generated from the weapons range. So, in compensation, the county has received a land assessment north of the range. But council still has concerns. Of course, the, 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 new, uh, the, the newest uh, uh, land base does not have the uh, assessment uh, uh, potential at the present time that the air weapons range has. Now the county will receive money from the range, about 15 million over the next five years, and they were able to negotiate a split mill rate on the non-residential assessment. This will enable enable to uh, uh, enable the, the county to uh, uh, look after any any shortfall that that may that may result. The MD of Bonneville will receive compensation that tops out at a million dollars per year to maintain two roads onto the range. That leaves the town of Bonneville as the only municipality south of the bombing range to be entirely left out of the deal. Well, I think the general feeling in the town is that uh, we've been shafted. 
Mayor Isley says the town is also feeling the pinch from growth related to the air weapons range. Bonneville has became the oil field service center, so a lot of the services that go up there come out of Bonneville. So we're feeling growth impacts from that. But he says the town is resilient and will survive. In Bonneville, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Habitat for Humanity accepted a big donation today from the Lloydminster Realtors Association. Since last August, they've been selling these Habitat for Humanity hammers for $100 a piece. The Alberta Real Estate Foundation agreed to match whatever they sold. Today, the charity is holding the results in their hands, a check of almost $50,000. For $100 a hammer, we were pretty shocked. But you know what? It's going for a good cause in our community. And, of course, somebody's going to have a home. Mm -hmm. And that was the most important thing. The hammer campaign originated in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, but the Midwest was happy to have the opportunity to launch it here. Great ideas are meant to be stolen, so we went ahead with that and uh, uh, talked to the um, press and the Real Estate Association here, and it just took off. The money will help build homes like these ones for families who qualify. Lloydminster's Autism Awareness Group held a barbecue at Superstore today. The lunchtime grill was held in advance of October being Autism Awareness Month. What we're trying to do is, is raise awareness and, and uh, for uh, the growing, most growing disability in, in uh, North America, if not the world. Right now, Proceeds one in every 125 event. kids will be diagnosed as ASD. Awareness group. The grassroots organization hopes to one day run a resource center in the city and in the meantime will continue with its mandate to help create awareness and understanding in the community. If a kid is on the floor throwing a tantrum in Walmart or here at Superstore that you know he could be just a bad spoiled kid but on the same hand maybe look a little deeper and realize that you know he might have some issues to him and, and also you're not a bad parent you've got a child on the spectrum.